This is Startup Storefront. The eyes are the second most complex organ in the body, beaten only by the brain. Thus, it's no surprise that eye care, specifically daily contact lenses, are expensive. In this, Waldo recognized an opportunity to disrupt the eye care industry. Waldo helps consumers refocus by one, saving the money by removing added distribution costs, and two, adding B12 to reduce dryness by up to 30%. In short, this means consumers get great contacts without paying over the top prices. Listen in as we talk with Ashley, the founder of Waldo, about how a little white lie led her to starting Waldo, why it's important to talk with your customers like you're sitting around a dinner table, and how they partnered with Walmart to become the first exclusive retailer to offer Waldo. And before you ask us where's Waldo, I think it's better if we just roll the episode. Welcome to the podcast on today's show. We're talking to Ashley from Waldo. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. For people who don't know, uh, what does your company do? So we are a eye care company and our goal is to make high quality eye care products more accessible and more affordable. What made you want to first start the company? What was like the thing that you were like, is it a problem in the market or things too expensive or was it personal to you? So personal to me, like I've been wearing contacts since I was 11 and when I moved to the US, I was really frustrated by all the friction associated with buying contact lenses and the high prices. When When did you move here? 2016. Okay. And my mom is also blind in one eye. And so I think I've always had a real obsession with vision I'd say so in parallel to like the pricing and the friction of purchasing I also thought that there should be a more optimistic experience and narrative around eye care and vision because sight is just such an unbelievable gift yeah Yeah. and so the combination of those two things led to Waldo and what was your first step? Like, what was the thing you, so you you started with the focus of how do we make contact lenses specifically more affordable? Yeah. Was that the first thing? Okay. And not even like, how do we make them more affordable? Like for people, it was like, hold on, can I get cheaper lenses for myself? Yeah. And I wanted to wear daily lenses because I was really struggling with, I had bi-weekly lenses and monthly lenses. So you've got the Let's solution. And, yeah, exactly. And I was kind of getting like an eye infection, like, once every couple of months. It's not fun. I remember in 2010, I was in Boston and I was at, I was at a pool and next to me was like a, like a uh, optometrist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so we just started talking. I was like, yeah, I use contacts because I was like in the pool. So I wanted to go get another one. And she's like, do you use dailies or monthlies? And I was like, oh, I'm using monthlies. She's like, most people like me would never say this to you. She's like, get dailies immediately. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's, but those are like way more expensive, exactly. right? At the time, like I was like barely new to right. the real world. So right. I was like, uh, and that, so I asked her why though. I was like, why do you say that? And she's like, just think about how even the cleanest of hands, right? At the beginning of the day, end of the day, and then you're adding solution. Mm-hmm. But even that case is like festering all sorts exactly. of stuff. And so by day like 20, she's like, how long do they usually last you before you're uncomfortable? I was like, yeah, probably like two weeks, maybe yeah. three if I'm lucky. Yeah. She goes, right. But you have another 10 days with those exactly. on average. And, and she's like, it's disgusting. She's like, stop doing it. She's like, so instead of getting dailies, if it's too expensive, just swap them out every two weeks. Right. And I was like, oh, this is a problem, though. Yeah. You know, and I started thinking, like, how many people can actually afford this? Because well, you're, this you're, it's a thing. lot of money. Yeah. And so when I went online to get my biweekly contact lenses and I wanted to buy dailies, you're looking at like $700 for an annual supply, yeah. mm-hmm. which actually for a product that you wear every single day like puts it into this luxury price point and nothing about the experience feels luxurious or even easy and so that was the trigger i can't even imagine what your first step was here but like what do you start learning about the contact lens industry that (laughs) you know what do you start figuring out so i was actually in boston at the time um beautiful place i was studying yeah great place yeah and I just started like researching who are the top manufacturers and then I set up a... Of contact lenses. Yeah, of okay. contact lenses. And then I set up a like mini website and email address and I just started to reach out to them one by one and be like, hey, I'm doing a university project. Okay. Was any of this true? Was it like a, for a class maybe? Well, semi-true. Like okay. I was doing an entrepreneurship course at the time. Okay. But a contact lens project was not one of my projects. Sure. So kind yeah. of half true. Yeah. Um, and then I asked them to send me their pricing. 
And then when I started to look at actually how much they cost to produce and understand more about like quality and regulation, I felt really ripped off as a consumer. Mm. And it was egregious. Yeah. That was when, you know, I basically like ran the numbers and figured out that if maybe I could do this sort of broader than just for myself, very quickly came to the conclusion that I would have to because the minimum order quantities and the regulation and stuff is like pretty intense and onerous. And yeah, essentially then I realized that maybe it would be possible to sell, you know, high quality contact lenses akin to the best, biggest pharmaceutical brands for like 30% cheaper and in parallel give the customer an experience that actually makes them want to engage with eye care and makes them think about eye health. Okay, so then in my head, this is how it works. So in my head, I go, okay, how many companies make contact lenses? And right. in my head, it's probably two. I don't yeah, know if that's so true. Yeah, three have 88% market share. Okay, and then I think about like, the behemoths that you were finding, giving you information. In alcohol, these people work like lobbyists, and so they right. basically will have like non-competes or you can't... Uh, is is it a little easier in the contact lens space where they're thinking like no one's going to come along and do this so yeah, we, don't, we haven't they haven't infiltrated i think it's that okay so then you come in and then you go okay what's my first step did you did you raise capital from the jump with like a pitch deck or were you like let me go try to buy i don't know a minimum quantity of like two thousand yeah so that you can't do like okay minimum order quantities are like in the hundreds of thousands oh okay. wow yeah um so i had to raise capital yeah. Which, if it was any other business, I probably would have gone for bootstrapping it. Like, sure. That's but the barriers to entry were actually... The, yeah, they're the pretty MOQ high. Yeah. Is t- okay. And so I did actually okay. put together like a presentation for my lecturer, my entrepreneurship lecturer at the time. And is that I, what you were studying? No, I was studying a master's in finance. Okay. okay. And entrepreneurship. But pretty late on, I'd, actually, I'd already worked for like seven years in consulting and then decided to take a year Like managing out. consulting? Yeah. Oh, for who? Um, Accenture. Okay, yeah. Mm. And before that, I was in brand management and moved okay. to the States to study. You've seen a lot. I mean, you, yeah. Yeah. You've been exposed. That's awesome. Yeah. And then I sent the sort of business plan or a couple of slides that I'd put together to him. And he wrote back within the hour and he was like, let's go for breakfast tomorrow. And he came with notes and he was like, what are you planning on doing after you finish studying? And I was like, well, probably go back into consulting. I'm not sure. And he was like, I think you've got to do this. And That was like a really nice little, you know, push. Yeah. Who was the person? His name was Jim Fitchett. And was he at the firm, uh, like the Accenture? Uh, No, no, no. He was at um, he was at Harvard where I studied. Okay. He was my lecturer. Was he an entrepreneur? Entrepreneurship lecturer. Yeah. He's he's had a I think built a couple of businesses before. Yeah. The price point you settled on that you you wanted to knock off 30 percent had you considered other price points before because i i know like price is often an indicator of quality and with the eyeglass market being what it was people are used to a certain amount of of dollars that they invest and i'm curious like if you had any kind of market research to dictate okay 30 percent is is still in the consumer's mind going to indicate a nice mix of value and quality i didn't start with the 30 percent. i started with like what can we feasibly do and how much of a discount can that be? And then from a brand point of view, we were just very focused on making sure that every touch point a consumer had felt and looked like quality and also made sure that like from a messaging standpoint, we were talking a lot about, you know, FDA approval, customer reviews, like all those other validation indicators. But also we didn't sell onto distributors and then into... Right, you were going direct. Yeah, we went direct. So you kind of own the channel. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, which makes your cost lower by default. Yeah. And was it challenging for you to, like, well, I don't even know how you would enter a market like this. <laughs> you just show up one day? Or is it, right? I mean, in some kind way, of. right? It's like, yeah, yeah you kind of direct you, a you consumer. get to a point where... 1st of August. This is so crazy. Yeah. You yeah. launch your website. Because it's know? not like you can go like, you know, into a grocery store and hand out samples. Right. Are you calling right? 1-800 exactly. contacts? Yeah. You're like, will you guys carry me? Or no? <laughs> no. No, right? No. So we, we've we only just diversified channels. So like Walmart is our first retail partnership. So and what does that mean? So you'll be, you'll have a little space there? Or how will it, how, how will yeah, it Yeah. So basically we'll be available 
in all Walmart vision centers. Okay. So that's, you know, north of 3,000 Congrats. optical stores yeah, that's yeah. Big. and on walmartcontacts.com. When you made that partnership, were you a little bit worried about how that made your brand look? Because aligning with a lower cost option, or maybe that's the point of the brand. It, it can be yeah. difficult to make that decision. I mean, when I met the team at Walmart and they spoke to us about what their goals are for vision, you know, Walmart's got two values. It's like make life better and cheaper basically and those are so aligned with what we want to do at Waldo like quality and product innovation has always been step one for us but then step two has always been okay how do we create value here for the consumer and we've run such a lean ship in order to do that and so when Walmart spoke about what their plans were for what they're calling vision 2.0 it was just so aligned with us. And you're blue already. And you're blue already. <laughs> oh, There's the man. whole Waldo yeah. Walmart <laughs> right. thing. So it just felt like a fit. That's amazing. I wasn't too worried about aligning with a value sure. player sure. Yeah. because actually their user experience is also great. I mean, when that you walk true. into a Walmart store or a Walmart vision center, it's a really great experience. Yeah. So, so how much do they cost versus the regular one? So is it a year for 700 bucks? Is that the number? That yeah, so Waldo, Waldo will cost you about 400 bucks for the year. Wow. For dailies? Yeah, or for, wow. for dailies. Yeah. I wish you were around before I got LASIK. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got LASIK. I was just so tired of the contact lenses. Right. And then you travel and I got I to count them. Yeah. And they're expensive and I, I run out or exactly. extend my trip. It's a, it's a mess. So I got LASIK instead. The Walmart Vision 2.0, what, what is that? Is, is that like just their terminology for like their entire company or is that specific yeah. to their vision stores? Yeah, so it's specific to their vision stores and they're investing a lot yeah. in revamping their vision centers. So to make those vision centers a destination for consumers. I feel like it, all Walmart as a whole, we've had a lot of companies on here uh, that, that are now in Walmarts and, and the ideology that they're behind now, I feel like is very different than they were 10 years ago, where they're at least with the products that they're shelving are they're trying to get into like a, a, a healthier space, a, a higher end space, like not not the Walmart of all where it's just like cheap packaged goods uh, from China or whatever. So it's interesting that they, they are doing it top to bottom approach on that with their vision centers and everything. Do you know if there are other avenues that they're they're looking to explore with like their eyewear and stuff like that like you know you're doing contacts but are they also yeah. asking you for more like you know glasses and everything like that yeah so i mean we will start with our contact lenses and then our eye drops will be available mm -hmm. in walmart soon but they're very focused on building out the healthcare pillar of their business so i think you know everything that you're talking about now is um like falls under that healthcare vision that they have and Vision 2.0, though, is specifically uh, like the revamping of their vision centers. And so I think they're looking at new brands within, you know, a variety of product mixes and also technologies because I think, you know, healthcare in general has been pretty slow to adopt new technologies. And so that's a focus for us, like outside of our partnership with, with Walmart, but also how can we use technology to make eye care more accessible How do you do people. it? What do you do? So we acquired a company last year uh, called Placido. It is started by Darius Mashvegi, who's now a partner to me. So we acquired that team last year and they've been building optical technology that sits on a mobile phone. And so our goal with that is actually to empower the optometrist to be able to give a broader spectrum of eye care monitoring and diagnosis using a mobile phone. Because one of the challenges in the industry is each device or piece of equipment is like $15,000 plus and just deals with one condition. And so this friction in the industry doesn't just exist for consumers, it exists for optometrists too. I mean, it's expensive for them to have their footprint, buy all of the equipment and compete with the likes of 1-800 contacts on price, you know, so they're getting squeezed too. And we feel that if we can make technology available with the same sort of characteristics as the, as the lenses, so make it accessible so bring their and more affordable, down. bring their costs down. But not get rid of them yet. No, I don't want to get rid of them. I guess because they're for edge cases, right? They're for if something goes wrong. No, I think that they should always be a part of the equation. Okay. And this is one of the problems, right, is I think you've got companies that are 
online yeah. and then you've got big offline players. Sure. And sure. everybody thinks that the two cannot be together. So it's like... And you, you see it that way. You see that they, they can. Yeah. You can make both easy. Yeah. That's fascinating. And my goal with Waldo is to bridge that gap. Is this an app that, that people can download off of the app store where it might be like a, a paid plan, but yeah. you can like, you can scan your eye and just kind of like, you know, how your, your Apple watch can take your blood pressure mm. and, and you can send that to your doctor as part yeah. of your overall checkup. Is that the overall concept behind this? It this is, scanning? but that first point of contact is the optometrist and not the consumer. So is the user the optometrist yeah. too? Okay, cool. So it's not a consumer facing no, per se. No, we'll build, like yeah. so we'll they can probably build records. that so that, you know, your doctor and you have access to the same yep. information. Yep. But for now, that's not what we want to do. We want to empower the optometrist to build relationships with their con- with their patients and sure. consumers. That's smart. And you- the online players that have this approach of, we just want to cut out the doctor and cut out any middleman. I don't agree with that. So, so this is something that just happened. I was just back home for my brother-in-law's wedding and my sister-in-law she needed contacts for the wedding. And so she was like in this position where she's running out. And so she goes, she has an expired prescription though. And so she goes on 1-800-CONTACTS, where is what she ordered. And in it, she's taking an eye exam from the app. And I had never seen this in my life. I posted this on my Instagram. People were like, that's been around forever. I had never seen it personally. And so this is the first time I'm doing it. So like the phone is a certain distance away. The phone tells her how far to stand away. Really interesting. And then shows her letters, she reads them. Yeah. And, and that's that. And I was like, what? And then sure enough, they were like, okay, nothing's changed with your prescription here. And they sent her the contacts and she was okay for the wedding. Yeah. But that was crazy to me, yeah. frankly. And that's a brand, I didn't, I don't know how long this has been around, but that was interesting. And I was like, oh, they're really trying to do away with yeah. like the repeat visit. And then I was like, why would you go to optometrist? That's why I was saying edge cases, just to make sure your eyes okay or for infections or to catch certain things that yeah. you couldn't catch via an app. Yeah. yeah, such a big part of it is switching between one and two and having no discernible <laughs> difference. <laughs> That's funny. But it was interesting. I'd never seen that before. You, you said you had B12. Yeah, Can you so, explain a little bit of that? Yeah, so we just launched Waldo Hydro Boost Plus, which is a contact lens where the saline solution is infused with vitamin B12. And so essentially, if, you're, if you suffer from sensitive eyes or dry eyes, the lens is likely to give you more hours of wear so it's a u.s first exclusive to waldo we've been developing it for i don't know five years at this point fda approved and yeah we launched that two weeks ago and so it's available on highwaldo.com and walmartcontacts.com and walmart vision centers how did you come up with the name because like you know obviously when you google waldo is, yeah. is uh, you know, the striped, the striped yeah. man comes up. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, what's the origin behind that? She couldn't see Waldo. No, I don't know. <laughs> couldn't find Waldo. Most people can, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a hard guy to find. <laughs> <laughs> that actually wasn't the premise. Okay. So the, the working <laughs> name at the time was Prism, which I hated. But I wanted a name that conveyed, like, seeing the world. Because I think vision is about seeing the world. And, you know, we were talking about photography a little earlier and yeah so i wanted that kind of brand identity for for the company and i was actually advertised to by walden university and i loved the way that the name sounded because i thought it sounded like world but i thought that it should be shorter and so walden to waldo and then check the trademark and um, actually the where's waldo trademark or the Waldo trademark that DreamWorks owned and had lapsed. Oh, But they also only owned the trademark like within their category, right? So right. you can't own... You, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I just loved it and registered Waldo. I was going to add too that also when you search Waldo glasses, you guys are the first one that comes up, but then the next thing is like costume ideas <laughs> for, for being Waldo. Yeah. I don't think but we'll yeah. go down that avenue. No, no, no. Yeah. But you we'll could easily you work. could easily create your own Waldo glasses that look you know <laughs> <laughs> somewhat similar. In terms of like adding B twelve, do you do you find just the solution that you put in to be an avenue of innovation? Are there more interesting things that? Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, you're an expert now in this game, and so what are the things that you find traditional companies are missing, or 
are barely scratching the surface when it comes to innovation of any kind? So I think one of the things in the contact lens, lens industry is you've got like the big players like J&J in contact lenses, and then you've got Elcon, who's the biggest player in eye drops. And these really big companies sell into distributors and then into consumers, but that customer feedback loop is really long. Like they don't know, yeah. whereas with us, we're sort of speaking to our customers all the time directly. And so that feedback loop for us is really tight. You know, one of the biggest sort of fastest growing pain points for people is dry eye. So yeah. the more time people are spending on screens, particularly from a younger age. I mean, you know, just the other day I got onto a plane and there's like three year olds sitting with iPads right in front of their eyes. So dry eye is going to become a much bigger concern. And so we are focused on how can we sort of address those the biggest eye care concerns with products in our range, like eye drops and contact lenses, and make them really easy to understand for consumers. Because I think a lot of the innovations in the industry, it's like, there's just a lot of jargon. And so customers don't really know why they should use a certain lens or not. So we're trying to say, look, it makes a lot of sense. It's like screen time, living in urban cities, your eyes are getting dry, Vitamin B12 is an important component of mitigating dry eye. We put that in the lens. It's like we just want to talk to our customers like you would around the dinner table and make it easy to understand. Can dry eye turn into something a lot more serious? Yeah. Like what, what does it become if left untreated or if it you know gets bad? There's not really like a treatment for dry, like a once, you know, here's a course of antibiotics and right, it's done. Right, right. But there's obviously like more advanced medical treatments where you'll go once every six weeks to you know, have a treatment to try and like soothe the effects. But that's why prevention is so important, like making sure that you are getting your eyes checked at your eye doctor yeah. and using products that are hygienic and making sure that you're investing in eye health the same way that you are your skin or, or your teeth or your teeth yeah. exactly is it all from the blue light that's emitted from the screens or is it a combination of that combination. plus the fact that you know we're staring at a fixed point yeah and really maybe not blinking as much that's exactly yeah, yeah. When, when i went and got my last eye exam you don't blink much I don't apparently. I you haven't that blinked about this you. whole interview. I, greatest staring contest, <laughs> perennial winner. But my my eye doctor prescribed that I every night do like a hot compress yes. for my eyes, and I'll be honest, I did it for a couple of days, and then it just got I it didn't become part of my routine, mm -hmm. and I just like kind of let it lapse. But mm -hmm. after talking to you, I think I might pick it back up again. Do the B twelve? Do you yeah. just sell the B twelve drops? Is that a no, thing? No, not yet. We, you can do we that sell though, right? hydration drops. Yeah, um, that's what I need. Which is there. Okay. And so the difference between our drops and some of the other over-the-counter drops is like, you know when you put other brands of drops in and it burns your eye immediately and then it releases tears and then for you know your eyes feel soothed sort right. of immediately. But actually there's quite a lot of chemicals in those I drops. I believe it. And so they cause your like blood vessels in your eye to constrict and over time actually creates more damage. So Waldo's lenses or Waldo's hydration drops rather mimic your own natural tears. They're all natural, there's no chemicals. And so we're trying to develop products that are as natural as possible and effective. When I got LASIK, my eyes went dry. And, yeah. and it was interesting because I think being in LA, it's more dry anyway. Like there's not much humidity in the air, especially when I got it. And so what would happen is as I was recovering, so the first week was amazing, first of all. The first week of it, unbelievable. And the second week, things got really dry. And so I can't see. And by, by like 5 p.m. every night or every day, I couldn't see. Like it was like basically everything was fading unless I rehydrated my eyes with these like really crappy drops. I had every single brand. It's probably scary too. Right. Yeah, that's scary. Oh, it was in, yeah. I was. I think I was angry. Mm -hmm. I was more angry than scared. Mm -hmm. And then... I just kept calling the doctor, so I kept going, I kept going. And then on the third day, like in a row of visiting, he said, well, the other option is take your blood, centrifuge, make these eye drops with your blood. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that sounds crazy, but okay, that's something that they do because it's got all the nutrients, and so apparently it's good and it's yours, and so your body 
you know, it, it basically doesn't reject it. It goes, oh, this is mine. Let's go. And it solves it. Luckily, I was going to Mexico that day. And so instead of doing the whole blood thing, I went to Mexico where it's very humid. Yeah. And all of a sudden it was and no, it was, better. it was no, it went away. Yeah. And then I came back and it, it lasted. Like it seemed like my eyes just needed a couple days mm-hmm. of that. Cause then they healed. But it was a yeah. very, you know, it wasn't like the worst story in the world, but it was very infuriating. The process of that seems so normal to me and everyone I had asked, I, I, you know, it's not like I'm getting reviews, but if I'm going to do a procedure, yeah. I ask the world how it went for them. And then I go, cool, tell me the recovery. And then I go really deep on understanding the pain points. My wife did it first. She did not have the same issue. And so this is an edge case where no one had shared this with me, yeah. but it was infuriating. And I was like, and none of the drops worked. Right. That was the worst part. The doctor who did the surgery was like, oh, have you, are you, do you have drops? And I'm like, I have every single brand of drops at my house. I'd like my money back. <laughs> they're awful like yeah. they don't do anything yeah. like i'm not convinced they do any I'm, i might as well just put water in my eye. Right. i don't know what they're doing there's not even like a second of oh it feels better none of right. that it's just they just suck yeah and uh that was the first time that like dry eye and then also climate became an interesting mm-hmm. right it's like i understood it in a different way right i saw it in a different way for the first time and that's true so i mean it is a combination of screen time uv light um not blinking enough and living in cities where there's a lot of pollution. Yeah. So we need to be protecting our eyes and we're living a lot longer. So we need them, we need them longer. And that's my goal for Waldo to be a brand that people want to engage with and you know, talk to us about the products that they want us to make. What other things are you working on besides, so we have the B12. Yeah, so we've got the vitamin lenses that we've just launched. We're working on a- We got these. Yeah, we've got blue light blue, filter glasses. Blue light filter. We're working on expanding our range of eye drops and contact lenses. So we've got another unique and really exciting contact lens in the mix that we'll be launching Does it have early a chip? next year. Does it connect to your iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I'll Could be able to know where you display. are at all times. <laughs> and supplements. We'll look at launching a range of... Like vitamins? Yeah. Okay. Oh, interesting. Mm. How does that tie in? If you suffer from dry eye, like obviously depending on the severity, but it you should take supplements for your eyes. What is the eye supplement market? I've never even heard of this market. What is it? So it's just vitamins with vitamins that essentially support your eye health. So vitamin B12 is one of them, fish oil, like yeah. the ingredients are basically all just around supporting your eye health. Sure. And you do actually see a, a, a difference. Carrots, are they are they as good as everyone has always said they are you know, for eyesight? It's a um, myth busted. Yeah. Yeah, it's an imp- it's an important <laughs> vitamin. <laughs> sure. But you you've got to eat like a ton of carrots, a lot. I think, for You're not going to the carrot things. business, are you? Right. No. no, hard no. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting, like the, the vitamins, because my grandmother has macular uh, degeneration, degeneration yeah. and so she has to get uh, very painful shots in her eyeball once a month. What? And it, yeah, and I mean, by now she's used to it, but even then, like just oh. just hearing about it, it makes you cringe a little bit and tense yeah. up. And I see that I want to do everything I possibly can to avoid that and, and maintain good eye health and just in general like it's nice to be able to see but yeah. <laughs> you know to avoid a, a shot in your eye exactly just sounds like something best avoided exactly with you and waldo though i know that you are engaged in um, with a nonprofit, right like yeah. the buy Sight one savers. get vision yeah yeah did you come about that because of your mom's history with blindness mm-hmm. and everything like how did how did that become a part of your company so I think like if you want to, if you want to be a, like a company that makes a difference, you just have to be giving back in some way. It's just, it's not good enough to just sell products. I yeah. think, you know, as individuals and companies, like we just need to be doing more in general. So I was thinking about what that cause should be for a long time. And sight savers essentially exist to end avoidable blindness and I mean, it's crazy that there are still hundreds of millions of people that lose their sight because they don't have access to like correct health or eye care, health care. And so we partnered with them and the way that it works essentially with every subscription, we give away a 
cataracts or we fund a cataracts treatment. For every pair of drops we sell, we fund a trachoma treatment. And for every pair of frames, we give a pair of prescription frames. And so the premise is, you know, for every one of Waldo's products, we give a sight restoring treatment. Are those numbers like worldwide? Yeah, so I mean... And is it mostly, mostly socioeconomic? Yeah. Yeah. So most of their work is in third world countries. And that's what's crazy. Like a trachoma treatment is a couple of dollars. Like a cataract surgery is actually $20. And the fact that people would lose sight because they don't have access to that. And we take that so for granted. So yeah, we're, we're really excited to work with them. And they do amazing, amazing work. And I mean, down the line, like, I would love to see our technology, you know, going into some of those third world countries and basically giving them access to diagnosis and monitoring tools without needing to build a footprint with the technology with the sort of big equipment when you launch your products does your deal with walmart mean you're you can only be sold there or it does yeah okay so for people to find you you got to go to walmart or you go to your website yeah exactly we've also got you know partnerships with independent doctors around the the u.s and so those will still remain in place but uh, walmart is our exclusive retailer partnership and they paid you for that i imagine <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are the details Tell yeah. us. <laughs> the target approach you were you like in between both or was it just like walmart had the right no we or, were speaking to or even like lens crafter i mean there's so many eye stores yeah. to me that all over nationwide that need some sort of like rejuvenation or we weren't planning approach. on going into retail this okay. year we were looking at it actually for next year and so we're just starting to have initial conversations and then when i met the walmart team told them about waldo and they were telling me about walmart vision 2.0 i said to tabitha who runs the division i was like hearing you talk about your ideas for walmart vision 2.0 is like listening to me pitch waldo like our goals for vision are so aligned and sort of out of that came this partnership. It was a pretty quick turnaround. Like I think the first time we met them was only like four months ago. Oh wow! So that's amazing. It's yeah, good pairing. We've run at run at speed. Yeah. This thing. How do you guys think about like social media and just getting your like what is your marketing? Yeah. And branding type of strategy. So we'll do quite a big back to school push. You know, our goal is to drive consumers into Walmart optical centers and get their eyes checked and bring eye care to the forefront really so we'll be doing a big back to school push in a couple of like urban areas focused around college campuses in particular because the nature of our demographic is you know slightly slightly younger who is it generally consumers between the ages of 18 and 34 so like millennial okay. gen gen z as well we do quite a lot on tiktok now do as well you? which oh, is fun wow are you on tiktok you personally are you doing some crazy stuff no, no, I don't do any crazy stuff myself. Lexi, check the TikTok. <laughs> check the Waldo TikTok. Yeah, check the Waldo one. You're not going to find much on mine. <laughs> so because of the partnership, is there a, also like some sort of cross collaboration? or do they keep, Yeah, so they we're, the... we're building out like what those campaigns will look like together. Nice. But we will definitely take the lead on like the social and like TikTok in particular. Like I don't think Walmart does too much of that, that just yet. That is so funny. Yeah. A management consultant talking about TikTok. This is good stuff. Yeah. I mean, right. those two things usually don't really. So what is the value you've seen from TikTok? Just because we have this conversation a lot on the podcast. And my philosophy, especially with this impending recession, is like uh, the virality of a video can allow you to acquire a customer yeah. at a clip that is free in a lot of ways. Or even if you're paying someone two to let's call it five grand a month, whatever it might be. That is nothing compared to a customer acquisition cost yeah. of like doing a Facebook ad or Instagram ad that people know is an ad that in your head you could target, but the virality is gonna go way better for you. Yeah, totally. But this is like, people don't understand what I'm saying. I sound like I'm Gary V or some like super, <laughs> you know, social media wizard. And it's, it's not that, it's like no. with the recession, people have to get more efficient. Mm. And the new algorithms allow you, you as like not a Kardashian, you as a right. creator at any scale to mm -hmm. kind of level the playing field. I'm glad you agree, Absolutely. but I'm just curious to hear, like, what, what was the first push to, to move into TikTok? Honestly, just we want to be where our customers are. Yeah. And the reality is that our customers are there. And I also think there's a, there's a shift in what 
information customers want before making their purchasing decisions. Like that's changing over time. So I think definitely what we're seeing is there's mistrust in these big pharmaceutical companies that do not have direct communication channels with their customer. So one of our core brand values is to be human-centered. And so I always want people to feel like they can get in touch with somebody at Waldo in a couple of seconds, whether that's TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. But you can't be human-centric and you can't say that you have a tight feedback loop with your customers if you're not on the channels that they, that they are. Yeah. When did that light go off for you? Like what? <laughs> Maybe I'm just jaded recently because of the conversation we've had over the last like three days, but a lot of people don't get it. And I think it's like pretty straightforward. Yeah. I'm just trying to maybe get from you, what was the one thing you uncovered? So that way, the next time I'm having this conversation, I can share the story of what you uncovered. Yeah, so I think, you know, initially it was personal. Initially, I was like, even when I was starting to look at manufacturing products and stuff, I was like, hold on, for me as a consumer, what would it take to put another brand of contact lenses in my eye? Like, how can we build trust? And... You know, obviously, like, the FDA is a regulation body that, like, builds trust, and that's like a stamp of approval. But even what you were just saying about when you decided to do LASIK, your research was from your peers. Yeah. So that, like, top down from company to consumer through a company narrative just, like, doesn't really... That's true. Yeah, the only thing that came from the company was the, the doctor had did LeBron James's eyes. And I thought, well, wow. that's cool. It's good enough for LeBron. It's good enough for LeBron. <laughs> yeah. It's good enough for me. <laughs> but that was it. Yeah. And frankly, I don't even know that that really mattered. Right. You know, it's like, so your whole thing is exist where the peers exist. Yeah. And then those, let's call them those signals or those, or those nodes, enough of them will cross collaborate equal customer yeah, at hopefully. some point. Hopefully. Yeah. And that's I just think it's important to be a brand that people feel is close enough to them like they can get hold of you you know I mean if you you can get hold of me like I've had customers like slide into my dms like I've had this problem or I love this or whatever like we are we're there I don't know how you would start to sort of reach out to the CEO of like J&J right AccuView or whatever but yeah I think that's the that's thing the so I think at a high level what you're touching on is like this is why I actually love social media because it is the ultimate leveling of the playing field. Yeah. And I think the big brands are upset because they're not creating the trends. They're just trying to keep up with them. Right. But they're so far behind that it allows the creators to kind of really win for yeah. a little while. And, yeah. and they can continue to do that just by being on being part of culture, I guess, is the way right. I look at it. Yeah. yeah. And we definitely don't have it figured out. Like You're playing the game. But you're we're playing the game. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're learning. trying, you're to, trying figure to figure it out. out. Yeah, exactly. What else can we expect from you guys in 2022, 2023? Waldo becomes Walmart. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll still be Waldo, but hopefully just with much bigger access. Like I think the access that Walmart gives us is something that's very difficult to build and very expensive to build digitally and on your own. So yeah, scale, but more of the same. You know, we, We're not going to lose our core values, and I think that that's why... Walmart was excited about a partnership because those values are like what we stand for and there isn't another brand in the space mm -hmm. that stands for what we do and is the way that we are. And so we just want to stay true to that and get bigger so that we can do more. Do you do prescription sunglasses? No, we don't. Can you? <laughs> we could. Like, we could. And I know that it seems that they're like so, the product categories are so sort of aligned but actually like the frames business and the contact lens or medical device mm -hmm. businesses are pretty separate and I think there's a lot of great companies doing really cool things you know like I think Warby does a great job and that's just not our core yeah business we might expand into that but it's not where I think the yeah. the largest opportunity is for us yeah it just annoys me that the insurance companies don't see prescription uh, sunglasses as part of your overall insurance totally. package yeah and it's like you know they're just as valuable as regular prescription lenses totally. personal gripe i have yeah 
Yeah. That makes sense, actually. But I can get why the insurance companies are slow to adopt that, yeah. that philosophy. Well, look, thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah, really sharing you. your story. So nice to meet I'm you. I'm going to use these eye drops, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ash. Thank yeah, you. Thanks so much. It. Hey, you. Yeah, you listening. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the episode. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, and we cannot wait to see you next week for another great episode. Cheers.